In this video, I'm going to be building three epic Lord of the Rings battles in LEGO, featuring one from each movie in the trilogy and using a different technique and style in each mock, kicking things off with where it all begins, the Fellowship of the Ring. Now, there aren't many battles in this movie, but one of my favourite scenes has to be the Battle of Ammon Hen, where the Urukai ambush the Fellowship, attempting to steal Frodo and the Ring. Now, for this style of mock, I will begin with a basic base plate, added in various blue plates, getting lighter as they get towards the shore, topping them off with transparent blue tiles and some small rocks, and finally a load of wet sand, creating the beach. I then used rock work to slope the beach up, building up around the outside of the mock and adding in a structure to create a raised section. With the rock work on either side, I gently sloped up the path in the center, adding some green grass and various different shades on the left, and continuing with the lighter green on the right. I placed a few small areas of rubble to represent the large statues we see. I then built up some small trees, using snot pieces with flex tube down the center, attaching grass pieces on the outside, starting with four or five stacked at the bottom, and working our way up to only one or two at the top, and began to work on my big tree. For this, we sloped up a load of brown pieces, and I wanted to try out a new technique where we use ball joints to attach the leaves at a more natural angle. Speaking of the leaves, we're going with a bright orange, yellow and olive green colour scheme. Sadly, this was very fragile and you can see we've had a couple of accidents, but I finished off the tree, adding in some more shrubbery bushes and larger plant pieces to add some more detail. And now it's time for my favourite part, the minifigures. I'm going to have two different scenes playing out on this mock, the first of which of course being the battle between Lurtz and Boromir. So I took this regular Lurtz minifigure, however he was a bit too naked for my liking. So I coupled him with a few pieces from a regular Urukai minifigure, only breaking one in the process, which I think will take as a dub. Giving him a bow and using a Harry Potter one piece as the arrow he was about to shoot at Boromir. Speaking of Boromir, I took him, Frodo, Sam and Aragorn from the Rivendell set and I used the head from an older Frodo. Doing the same with Boromir, using his old head and legs. Down on the river I placed a boat with Sam and Frodo, ready for their getaway. Adding Boromir under the tree stump, with Lurt standing over him about to deliver the finishing blow. But don't worry, Aragorn has fought his way through some Urukai and is about to tackle Lurt to prevent him from killing his friend. Of course the two scenes weren't as close together in the actual movie, however I wanted to combine the more battle aspect, with Frodo and Sam escaping in their boat. And speaking of which, combining battles and boats is something that the sponsor of today's video does absolutely perfectly. Let me introduce you to World of Warships. It's an awesome free to play team based sea battle PC game where you can command a growing fleet of over 500 historically accurate battleships on a bunch of different hyper detailed maps. Speaking of detail, the graphics are top notch with highly detailed weather effects and even realistic explosions and battle scenarios. You have multiple ship classes to choose from including battleships, destroyers and even submarines with new content being added every month. If like me you don't play on PC however don't worry it's also available on other consoles which has created a massive player base and active community. And you can join this community by downloading and playing World of Warships for free using the first link in the description down below. And if you use the code WARSHIPS, you can unlock a ton of exclusive rewards including a bunch of doubloons, credits, premium account time and even a free ship. So thank you to World of Warships for sponsoring the video and let's get back to Middle Earth. I've got to say I love the colour scheme and vibrancy of the build, but this is all going to change with the second build. As we move on to the Two Towers movie, there was only one scene I could really pick from this movie, of course, the iconic Helm's Deep. For this I wanted to create a more complex base, laying down a load of colourful bricks on the inside. I'll be using these snot bricks to create a smooth and seamless rock border around the outside of the mock. This is known in the LEGO community as freeform and I think it looks really really nice and it's definitely a bit more unique than just slapping it on a base plate. I plated off the entire upper section leaving room for this one hole where I'm going to add some debris later but I layered everything up to the right height. So now we have a big grey frisbee or at least like half of one. It's time to move on to the fun stuff and add some details. I placed down a mixture of plates and tiles and built up this large rock in the center to create the scene with the Urukai leading the battle cry. I added in a small stream leading up to the wall. Speaking of which I didn't want to just make this a plain grey wall. I used a load of smaller pieces to add in as much detail as I possibly could. Building this up on the front and the back, adding in as much texture as possible, and doing the same on the far side, again making it as detailed as I could, sprinkling in the sand green colour as a small nod to the original Helm's Deep Lego set, which featured this as an accent colour, and I think it works really, really nicely. Of course, the stage of the battle we're recreating is just after the Berserker has blown up the wall. So we have this massive crack in the centre, and on the back side we're building the staircases on either side, finishing the top of the wall off, adding in some extra details and some crannulations. We've now got it to a pretty decent point. You can see obviously this wall over here is pretty finished now. It's sort of crumbling off as you go over the side and now I need to work on this side here. I basically need to work on where this staircase is going to end and then cut it off and for that I had to work out exactly how high the wall was going to be and with that knowledge I can now go ahead and copy and paste it over onto this side. So I added some internal supports into the center so that I could raise it up and then continued to work on the wall and staircase adding the crannulations on top and now we've reached the point at which I had to cut off the staircase so I took it apart and rebuilt it in the way I wanted it to look. Finally we capped off the ends of the walls with a few extra little details. Outside of the wall I finished off the details, adding in a few extra pieces of rubble from that massive explosion. Now the build is finished, it's time for the figures. Firstly I didn't want that broken Urukai to go to waste, and there's a small red plate visible through the transparent clear water, so I made it look like he'd lost an arm and was bleeding into the water. Looking through the crack in the wall we added an Urukai leader to the rock, as well as multiple Urukai storming through the gap. Waiting to repel them were Gimli and Aragorn, and I built up a few elven warriors to add into various places across the wall, starting with one who's been ambushed by an Urukai on a ladder, one sending an Urukai flying back over the wall, one Urukai has made his way through the entrance, and 
and is about to storm up the stairs. However, we created the iconic scene with Legolas surfing on his shield. Yes, this was as fiddly as you can imagine, but we got it placed. Another iconic scene is this old man who lets his arrow go too early and begins the entire battle, so I had to recreate him, followed by an elf backing up Aragorn, another one in a sword fight on top of the wall, as well as this Rohan soldier helping to snipe this orc off the top. Now outside, we fully filled the base with loads of swarming uruk about to storm through the entrance, even adding one falling back down to his death. Now the battle is fully created, I love the way this came out. I'm so glad I bought so many uruk for this video, but they definitely took a toll on my wallet. However, they come together to create a really awesome battle scene, and I've got to say the wall came together better than I thought it would. One day I'd love to build a full-on Helm's Deep castle, but for now it's time to move on to our third and final build. Now for the final movie, Return of the King, I'll be building the scene from the Battle of Pelennor Fields outside of Minas Tirith. I built up this black base, adding the one ring on the front as an extra detail. I built up the structure on the inside, and covered this up with dark tan plates. Now the terrain in the battle is pretty flat, but I layered it up with a few areas of olive green, using a bunch of wedge plates, and again making this reasonably detailed. I topped it off with a few pieces of rock, and now it was time to build our centerpiece for the battle. The other day I got curious, and wondered if anyone had ever built an Arlie front out of Lego, so I hunted all over the internet, and landed on the perfect model. With all the pieces ordered, I organized them all, and began building the model. It's designed by Build Better Bricks, and I've got to say it was a fantastic build. First we built the body, adding in two legs on one side, and the final two legs on the other side. With these done, you build the head, tusks, and trunk, and cap it off with the wooden structure that's mounted on top. This model is absolutely fantastic and really could have been one you'd find in a Lego set. I think all in it cost around $100 to make and it really is worth every penny. It has some good posing and articulation as well as some amazing details. But for now with that built I brought back in the base and you can see there's one more thing I need to do to finish this off and that is to lay tiles all around the black border and add in a few extra plant pieces across the build. Now I posed my Arlie font but of course we can bring it all to life with the minifigures so it's time to build our mama kill. Starting with the crazed man we see at the front. Using what I think is an Ninjago body I added this crazy face and stole some feathers from a turkey to create the wooden structure that sits behind him. For the first of his accomplices, I built a guy with a quiver and a mask, adding in a similar bow to what I made for Lurts earlier. I built a similar one with a mustache, one with a golden spear, and created a couple more warriors to add to our Arlie font. I added the leader or driver to the front section, with our other warriors posed all around, and one who's been sniped off the top and is toppling over the edge to his death. But they're not the only foes that our heroes are going to be facing in this battle. Of course, the ground is swarming with orcs. For this, I used a mixture of Mordor orcs, Moria orcs, and various other designs, adding in a brutish leader to the front. Of course, facing off against these enemies were the Riders of Rome. I didn't have a single Rohan minifigure, but we pieced together loads using a load of different knight and viking torsos, adding in King Theoden, as well as Aemir, a few other warriors, and Legolas swinging from the legs of the Arlifant. I even posed a couple of Rohan soldiers being smacked by the tusks here like we see in the movie. And now I've got to say, I think I recreated this battle pretty well. I really love the action shot that we've captured in this scene, with not only Legolas taking down the Arlifant, but the Arlifant swinging its tusk, smashing Rohan soldiers left, right, and center, whilst the Mama Killer Norks shoot down on their opponents. And whilst the ground terrain might not be the most detailed in the world, that Arlifant build really brings it to life. So if you want to check it out, there's a link in the description. As well, of course, a link to our sponsor. But let me know which mock you preferred out of the three here. I had a fantastic time diving into the world of Middle Earth. Let me know what you want to see me do next. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you'd enjoy this video you can see on screen where I built a load of different medieval battles in Lego. Or equally, if you want to go down the more peaceful route, I built a Lego city in seven days the other day. So I think you might enjoy that one as well. With that being said, have a great day, guys, and I'll see you over at one of those two videos. Goodbye.